I don't want to give you hope if you don't like the Imperial Agents version of Death Watch, which seems to be most people. But on Facebook, Games Workshop is using a response for a lot of people. Good news, the studio is right now working on a digital update that will once again see Death Watch armies take to the battlefield in games of Warhammer 40,000. It's expected in December. And this was followed up by a similar update on the Warhammer community website. Lots of you have gotten in touch over the last few weeks with your thoughts on the way that Death Watch kill teams now work in games of Warhammer 40,000. Okay, we hear you. A couple of squads is not enough. You want to mobilize the might of a full watch fortress. While such deployments are rare in the 41st millennium, they are not unknown. And the Ordo Xenos, and the Warhammer Studio for that matter, is not deaf to the many calls for aid. So we can confirm today that in December, we'll be releasing a digital update with more options to take your Death Watch army to the field and lay low the alien menace. Watch this space. Could have made a Watchmaster pun, that I was right there. Or just Death Watch this space. It was there, it was an option. So what happened? Games Workshop put out a trailer for a Death Watch animation, and that's on Warhammer Plus. The comments were very negative on Facebook. A lot of people don't consider legends to be real rules, or more reasonably, new players don't understand or like it that when you ask about those Space Marines at the start of the game Space Marine, you get told that they are not in the Space Marine Codex. Which means that when you play Death Watch, Units like the Space Marine Dreadnought, Razorbacks, Bikes, a lot of the models you see in this army which was displayed by Games Workshop in White Dwarf do not work in a Death Watch army. You could play with the Space Marine Codex and ally in Death Watch kill teams, but that doesn't feel like an army. It would be an army in two parts and if, like with the images put out by Games Workshop, you want Death Watch and Space Marines to be one cohesive force, it needs new rules. What if you want a Primaris Reaver in the Death Watch kill team, like in the trailer for the animation? Well, they have Legends rules and I am going to tap the sign, but you can't buy a kill team with that model. So when Games Workshop announced this animation on Facebook, there was a lot of negativity of, this isn't even a real army, I can't get any of these models, what are you talking about Games Workshop? Amongst the negativity, well the negativities that wasn't openly hostile or insulting, those posts got this pasted response. How much power was behind it was uncertain. It was copied to a few people and seeing it on Warhammer Community means that it must have been approved by the higher ups, so it is legit. Does this mean a sustained fan campaign of negativity has worked? That it wasn't selling all your models and telling Games Workshop you were done as a customer. They are not going to care about you at that point. You're already gone. There's nothing they could do, but constant complaints of Make these a real army again, why aren't they a real army? I'm not able to buy more models if they're not an army. That seems to work. Maybe it can be applied to other campaigns like, Oh God, why do my mortgage repayments cost less than a box of Battle Sisters? It's a thought for other YouTube channels. So what we'll be getting is a digital release, not coming through White Dwarf, so it should be free. Like the Drukhari Sky Splinter Detachment was free. If it's coming in December, then I have a few months to finish my shadow operations before... Well, what exactly is coming? So we have a scale of what to expect. What may happen is we get a small number of Space Marine units that are currently in the Space Marine Codex, get the Death Watch keyword, lose Oath of Moment, and they can be taken in the Ordo Xenos detachment only. This would be enough to give the Death Watch some more units. Maybe characters aren't included so that the writers don't have to rewrite which units can be joined. But it would give you Stern Guard, Vanguard Veterans with Jump Packs, Inceptors, units like that. Or, going up a level in Hope and Cope, a new detachment for Space Marines. It takes the Index Death Watch detachment or the Ordo Xenos detachment version and says, okay, you use this with the Space Marine Codex, you have Space Marine units. The stratagems for special ammunition require the Death Watch keyword, so they only work on kill teams, but Redeploy and Armor of Contempt is any Space Marine or Death Watch unit. That would make it work a bit like how it currently does, where a Space Marine army can ally in Death Watch units, only a few of them, except that currently the Death Watch units don't have the right keywords to make use of Space Marine stratagems. As it stands, if you want to use the Death Watch as allies to a Space Marine army using the Agents of the Imperium rules, you could, but in say, 
the Gladius Task Force, the Armor of Contempt Stratagem doesn't work on Death Watch units, as the new Codex Imperial Agents Death Watch don't have the Adeptus Astartes keyword. So that's the lower end of what we could get. Actually, the very lowest end is nothing. We get nothing. Just a statement that, hey, you know, outside of tournaments, you can use some Space Marine units and just switch a keyword around. We give you approval to do that, something that a lot of people have been doing anyway. Or we get something that would annoy a few people who comment online, a full detachment for Space Marines that makes the Death Watch units Adeptus Astartes, but with the specification that this is Legends only and cannot be used in tournaments. YouTube only lets me tap the sign once per video. So what about more of a middle ground detachment? Just one detachment for the moment, something like the Crute Detachment. Think of the Adeptus Astartes as the Tau Empire and the Death Watch as the Crute. A detachment is written that gives bonuses to Death Watch units, even while the Oath of Moment, the equivalent rule of the Greater Good, won't do anything for the Death Watch, as it doesn't do anything for the Crute, as they lack that rule on their data card. Then if you want big guns for your Crute, you bring a hammerhead, or for the Death Watch, you bring a demolisher or whatever Space Marine players are using as anti-tank. I'm going to keep using Kroot as a good example. Kroot can operate alone just as Death Watch can operate alone with only kill teams, but we see them as part of a Space Marine army. They are Space Marines, but different. The Kroot are their own separate thing, but also part of the Tau Empire army. So going a bit further, that detachment, but the Death Watch units regain the Adeptus Society's keyword, and the characters and the transports can be used. Then the Death Watch can get into Land Raiders, as we see in the background of this image, and they can be joined by characters like the Space Marine Lieutenant, which you got in the Death Watch Combat Patrol. A different option is that the Death Watch is still part of the Imperial Agents, but they can take specified Space Marine units in their Imperial Agents army if they use the Ordo Xenos detachment. I've heard it battered around online, why not go for the Brood Brothers detachment version or how Crude Crusade armies work, have a percentage of the army can be taken from the Space Marine Codex. So not just there's a couple of units you can add, you can add any of them up to a percentage. This sounds simpler for the rules writers, but they have probably just had this dropped on them and then they now need to go through each of the Space Marine units and decide if it's viable or if it needs to be made impossible to include. The Brood Brothers rule does that to match the law and the rules. No epic heroes and probably no Space Marine Rhino when there's an Agent's Rhino already there. Like before, no scouts, no devastators, no tactical marines, maybe no jump intercessors? It would be an updated version of the Black Spear Task Force. Then they would also need to decide if they're going to go through the vast Space Marine Legends unit list to make sure it works. If there are Death Watch veteran bikers, which there are, do you block the Space Marine Legends bike squad? Do you block their Primaris alternative? Or forget that nuance. Just let it be 50% of your army can be Space Marine units. But that's going to feel so pointless if you can't attach an Apothecary, which has the Adeptus Society's keyword, to a Death Watch unit, which has the Imperial Agent's keyword. Why have a Land Raider if your Death Watch veteran still can't ride in it and you need other Space Marine units to then go inside it? And if you say, no Space Marine Rhinos allowed, your Space Marine units can't get in Rhinos, that can be annoying. If you allow Space Marine Rhinos, how will you differentiate a Space Marine Rhino in Death Watch colours from a Rhino from the Imperial Agents Codex in the same colours that can transport Sisters of Battle or Death Watch veterans? Then we want a way of making the keywords work. A Razorback being able to transport six Adeptus Astartes models or six Death Watch models, but they also need to consider how to factor in the Primaris Death Watch units from Legends. An Incursor team can't enter a Razorback because of the Phobos keyword, but a Spectrus kill team in the same armour could unless you start adding keywords. While it sounded easy at first, that takes a lot of work to designate armor keywords for transports and characters being able to join units. Would they then also remember to update, say, the Dreadnought rule to say Adeptus Astartes or Death Watch in six inches can reroll hit rolls of one? Or would they not bother? What I'm saying is, I do not envy the rules writers. These are people who are probably writing version 3 potential question mark of the 11th edition rules and now get pulled back into 10th edition to rub two codexes together to make a working, easy to understand digital set of rules before they get sent back to working on 11th edition which has to be compatible with the creature that they just amalgamated. I do hope they give us something workable as an alternative to the agent codex and do so in two months. At the very upper end of hope, is the option to keep using the Death Watch in the Agent's army like the Imperial Agent's Codex says, or to field them in an Adeptus Astartes army, 
but fully integrated. This gives you the options. Play them as a pure Space Marine force representing an entire watch fortress led by a watch captain or watch master, or you have them as a mix of kill teams and other eclectic humans working for the Inquisition as the Ordo Xenos. So what would we need to do to make it fully integrated? Well, you would want Oath of Moment for all Death Watch units, or a new faction rule, because the Death Watch veterans in the Agent's Codex already reroll all hit rolls against aliens. Oath of Moment lets you reroll all hit rolls against an enemy unit. Assigned Agents isn't really an army rule, as it doesn't make the Death Watch work as an army, it lets them join other armies. So that would want replacing, a new faction army rule. So this is less of a, we're putting two things together and making it try and go. This is Codex Death Watch in digital form. That is what people are now hoping for. Death Watch kill teams would then get the Adeptus Society's keyword, or a whole new keyword, instead of the Agents of the Imperium keyword. So the Auras of a Dreadnought would work, the Stratagems would work, and the Space Marine Detachment rules would work on Death Watch units if you're playing them in the Adeptus Astartes Space Marine Codex Detachments. Something to make it so that you can use the Gladius Task Force or the First Company Task Force, if you wanted, with your Death Watch units fully integrated in the Space Marine Army. Then they would want to get all of the Death Watch Kill Team units out of Legends and suitable for tournament play. The individual models are sold by Games Workshop, they're just not sold as an entire box. Secret Extra Christmas Box? Secret Extra Christmas Box? What is Kill Team Box? If we are in Wishes Land, sure. Then we would need a list of all of the transports that each kill team can enter. So a Spectrus kill team might not have the Phobos keyword, but you could have it written in these new digital rules that a Razorback was not something they could enter, something like how their current datasheet does it. In Wishes Land, every Death Watch unit is basically remade, and the veterans with shields and bolt guns get a combat weapon, and the Indomitor kill team gets fists that hit on a 3+, and the Fortis kill team has chainsaws that hit on a 3+, not a 4+. And then every kill team gets an updated list of which Space Marine characters can join their unit. So apothecaries like the one in the combat patrol, captains, judicias, they can all join kill teams again. And it is all so good that it becomes a tournament standard at about 50% win rate. So what are your hopes and how far down the chain of hope do you think we're actually going to get? If it's bad or it doesn't do what it seems to do on the tin, or the Warhammer community article and all the Facebook posts suddenly disappear, I will be giving you some alternate ways to play the Death Watch other than using the Imperial Agent's rules. Until that is out, let's tap a different sign. The Legends units of Death Watch and all the units that are available to you if you play Death Watch in the current timeline. Have a great day with Death Watch in 40k.